Hi, welcome to Creative Kingfisher. I'm on the mission to make a material junk journal. So I've made paper ones before, so this is my first attempt. Uh, material ones, I want to talk you through how I've pinned it together and then I'm going to get on and sew it and uh, hopefully come out with something that's put together quite well. So this was a cushion cover all cut up. So the lucky thing about that is it already had some wadding on the inside. So I've then pinned some lace all the way around and some kind of beading or trim here. So that's all pinned ready to go. Then on the other side, <clears throat> I thought rather than just leave it to the cover, let's start making some pages. So on here, this is an old cross stitch that I did years ago and I couldn't find the rest of the pattern to do the bit that was the umbrella and I couldn't make it up. So I chopped that out. We've got some papers behind. It's okay to add paper and material. And then we've got two pieces of material put together for a page. And then on this side, we have an envelope with two pieces of material put together, a different piece of material pinned. So I'm pinning. There are other ways of doing this. I'm sure that you can find on YouTube, but I like to pin. And then I've pinned a button and I've made, I've used some thread and gone through and knotted some thread on there. So those are the things that are made. I took a doily off the front of the journal because I didn't really, although I like the doily vintage wise, it didn't complement the front of the journal. So I am going to just put some lace on the front because I think that might look a little nicer and we can still see the design then. But the design is not amazing, is it? But it's quite vintagey looking. So we can pin some lace on as well. So let me just quickly do that for you. You'll be able to see how that looks. So when it's junk journaling, we don't need to finish off edges particularly. You just need to make sure that you feel it's secure enough. So we're not, if, if you're worried about it and you're not a sewer, but you can use a sewing machine or you do have one, then brilliant. You can just do rough stitching however you like. I will probably do, I would imagine a big zigzag. I don't know yet, but if you don't have a sewing machine, but you know how to use a needle and a thread, you can definitely do it by hand. Of course, it's gonna take you longer, but if you don't mind sitting down, relaxing of an evening, perhaps with the telly on, you don't, you don't mind enjoying the process of like doing a, a running tacking stitch, anyhow you like, you can do that. If you don't like sewing at all, but you fancy the idea of fabric, then there are ways of gluing. You just have to find a glue that will hold and dry quick enough. It's it's just that I, I want to sew. That's part of the reason why I want to use the fabric, but you can also add fabric to paper journals as well. So it's, it's there are options, you know, numerous options, and there's never a right way or wrong way when it comes to junk journaling, as I'm sure you know, deep down you know. Like, you don't need to look at what I'm doing and go, oh yes, I need an old cushion cover. Oh yes, I need lace. No, you don't. You can do it so many different ways that you want to. And often building up materials, different textures and things, it's not only fun, but the way that we're gonna get the nicest effect. So this has now become my front cover. So the first thing I'm going to do is obviously sew that front cover together. I'm going to take these pages out. So I did use cardboard templates just to make sure that when I do it, there's going to be a section down the middle, which is not where the pages are going to go. Because I need to sew these pages in, leave a bit in the middle so that you've got a piece either side. So I did use cardboard for that, but again, it's however you want to, however you want to do it. So let's move these pages and let me get this sewn together so you can see. So I'm gonna just show you a bit of the sewing. What I would say about the sewing anyway with a, with a machine is that, you know, you're not wearing this. You're not you're not having to go out and show the world how you sew. So there, so, so there's like no pressure. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, it's messy, 
but you know what that's okay it's kind of caught it in some places and not others but again that's okay we're not looking for a we're not looking for a tidy finish which is the beauty of it well i'm not anyway somebody else might be of course but i'm not so here we go down the next and i'll come back to you when i've done the whole thing okay so we're done we're done we're done we're done is it the best sewing i've ever done no definitely not does it matter no definitely not so what i'm trying to say to you guys is you don't need to be a good sewer to do this you just need to get on and do it so i've managed to incorporate the lace around it as well uh very roughly you know uh so i don't think i need to sew what i could have done if i needed to is just done some random stitching on here to get that lace on but i think it's going to hold just fine so this is the other side uh i can see where like that's not cool but i think that could just be hand stitch if needs be there's a couple of areas like that but the most important thing is that the wadding underneath is sewn together so if i was starting from scratch i would need two bits of material and something firmer to go in that material if i wanted like a stiffer cover but actually two bits of material together without anything inside is absolutely fine i was just lucky because the cushion cover was already made like that so without further ado less waffling is required i think now this is going to be the most complicated one so i'm going to dismantle this i think because hmm do i need to dismantle it or can i just go with it i think i will only because it'll be easier to build it up without all the pins in and as you know like you don't want your machine going into the pins so that's the only disadvantage of using pins but i quite like it quite like using colored pins i like the feel of it so that's what i've been going with all right so i'm just gonna take this off as it is so that i know how i want it to look and then i've got my pages here and i don't even think i need to hold that with pins it's two very straightforward pieces of material cut that in i'm still going for the zigzag i quite like it but you don't have to just go for a straight runner if you want the zigzag will take more cotton maybe looks a little prettier but i don't think it makes much too much difference honestly let's get started let's get the show on the road there I've got my page now either side of my page and um, prefer this side actually but there'll be lots of bits and pieces going on I'm sure so that's that so then let's get my other bits on there put that one behind there now with this you could glue it first before you sew if you feel so inclined but um, I am just going to go straight across the top with a zigzag, straight across there and straight across the bottom to hold that paper in place because I don't need it to be completely all sewn down like with any, without anything coming up so I think that will do it. There, it's just happened. Now we're going to go across the top of the dog. I'm really glad this dog is featuring because it's been a bit of an upset for me. I could not find the pattern to finish off that cross stitch and uh, I just didn't, it's just been sat in my sewing bag for forever so. I'm going to go round him a little bit down to the paper down the bottom. Get that paper straight. It's just so quick and easy push this machine back so you can just see um okay have a pucker there again don't mind uh sewn there sewn down there and it's sewn across the bottom and so he's in place everything's in place my pages the basic part of my page i'm going to be adding a lot more to this i'm sure but the foundations of my page are there so 
shall we get the page in to the cover? Now this is where we need to get where we want it to be. So we don't want the pages hanging over the edge. Not that it would matter that much. We kind of want to get where they're going to be. So that's a page, that's an envelope. Let's just see where it's going to go. Do that. These are supposed to be good scissors, but they're struggling with this material. I don't know why. It shouldn't be. It's not very straight, is it? So I've changed up my bobbin to a blue, I add my thread to a blue, and I am stitching in my page onto some ribbon first before it goes in the book. So I think that might make things a little easier. So here we go. I want, I want it to go a bit faster. Ah, here we go. I'm fiddling around with it and still not got it how I want it. But anyway. It's done the trick. Hopefully you can see that nice little blue line down there. And uh, on the other side, a bit of a mess, but yeah, it's okay. So what I'll need to do is do something on the back of that page to cover up the fact that that's there. So we have that ribbon, and that ribbon is gonna sit in the middle of the book. So let's just see where the middle is. Okay, so that is, Gonna go central there. I might just pin that as well. And we have a book flap page. Can we get a pin in? That's ready for the other side, the other page. Now we need to be getting this ribbon centered in the book, and we need to be getting a much better stitch than what I've got this on at the moment. So I'll be straight back with that. So I'm not sure what was holding the machine back, but um, it was, that was tricky. So I guess the thickness and the material is gonna be a problem if my page is nice and raggedy, raggedy baggedy, and it's in. So I've got some space to put some pages in there. We'll put them together and put them in there. I'm not too sure which way I'm gonna go with that yet. But there we have a nice page. Okay, guys. So my envelope, I'm not gonna sew it in right now because I need to sew all the way around there first. So what I've done is I've used a template for the back piece, then I've made a lower piece to stitch on to the envelope, and then I've made a curved piece which is edged all the way around there, it's got to be sewn all the way around there, and then the button is a separate kind of thing. I'll come straight back to you. That was really kind of nice. I enjoyed doing that one. It didn't get stuck so much. I had it on better stitching, bigger stitching, which is what I should have done before. But it's such a while since I used my machine. I was like, oh, can't remember. So we have, we have an envelope. We just need to, I mean, I didn't have to go down the sides. I kind of did, but now I can't stitch it accidentally to the um, back. So, just get that button off and get the pins off now and just work my way around the edge of the envelope. I think that's quite nice. Okay, now we're going to work out how this button's going to go on. Um, might have to be hand sewn this one, I think it will be. Unless I glue it. No, I'm not going to glue it, I'm going to hand sew it. It'll take me a few minutes to do that. Um, guys, hope you're enjoying this. If you are, give it a thumbs up for me. If you haven't subscribed, then please do. I'm sure you will enjoy watching my fabric junk journal journey. Being this is my first one. I'm sure I'll make some mistakes along the way, but hopefully there'll still be stuff you can learn from me regardless of those mistakes. So I've got quite a big needle here, see how it goes, because we can get it through. 
through the buttonhole, hopefully we can. I'm just gonna, I think I might double up on this, give it a bit of strength. All right, so I tasseled this with some thread that I had, just did a little knot through, you can do it however you like. Thought it looked quite cute with the thread. I'm just gonna go in behind and leave the threads showing. Too worried how it looks, there's only for a show, it's not really doing anything. If I'd thought about it, I could have used more of that thread, but it would have been quite thick, so perhaps not. I like the cream thread anyway, it's got a nice kind of vintagey feel about it, so I'm not too worried about that showing. I think that will definitely keep it in place. But yeah. All right. Do you know what? Let's get this envelope in. We can see how that goes, can't we? So I won't be satisfied until I've got it in. I'll be worrying about whether it's going to go in or not. So I'll be able to put some journaling stuff in there. I look forward to doing that. Leaving all my thre threads hanging. I like to do that. Now, I am going to sew this onto the ribbon. Happy doonus, you know. Oh gosh, break up the happy home here. Alrighty, okay. So yeah, we've got wonkiness going on, but that's all right. Because obviously I can now put as many embellishments on here, bits of material to build up the look anyway. So it doesn't matter so much if we see kind of like odd running lines and stuff, because some of the embellishments can be glued on. They don't all have to be sewed. So we've got loads of threads coming on here. I'm going to pull them out and I might actually add some um, buttons and stuff onto those later. I'm going to let them show. Okay guys, so we have one envelope, one envelope page, one page page and they're both onto this ribbon and the ribbon is onto the book. Now the only thing about that is we've got one there so actually we could have done with another line there and I probably will do that or I'll put some ribbon all the way down here, something to make the centre of the book so it doesn't matter if it's slightly off centre or not. Okay guys, I hope you've enjoyed that. I know it was a longer video, but I hope you've enjoyed the sentiment of where we're going with this. I hope you join me on my journey and subscribe to Creative Kingfisher. Thank you.